Hello everybody, you may know me on this page as somebody who makes a lot of Halo videos, but if you looked at my earlier videos, you know that I actually do some game development stuff, so in this video I'm going to quickly go through kind of my player creation workflow, and by quickly I mean it's going to be like a thousand times fast forward. So uh, first of all I'm just grabbing a Google image reference of a dog, because the character is going to be a dog. So I picked this Shiba Inu, this doge. Much wow, and I'm jumping in, and I just go on a side view with a flat plane, and I'm kind of just um, extruding the side uh, edges to get the general shape and kind of a flat plane image of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that general outline of it, and then I'm going to um, kind of uh, solidify it. Not with the modifier, but I'm just kind of extrude it outwards with a mirror modifier attached. And I'm kind of just mirroring the head and the legs and um, just beefing up this pooch, making him a little thicker so that it looks like an actual dog, beefing up the legs, um, and just making sure everything's not flat and everything's in kind of an appealing area and it's all anatomically in the right spot. Um, going in there, I'm just making sure that, you know, the body looks good and it kind of connects to the legs in a good way. I could retopologize this and make it all one mesh, but um, this is kind of a placeholder and I'll make a better one later for my actual game, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Adding a jaw, because I almost forgot to add a jaw to the dog, but um, I'm just going in quickly and putting it in there. It's very simple mesh right here and a very simple process, just model it. Um, moving the tail up because it needs to be in a good position to be animated, and I'm just jumping in and making an armature throwing a bunch of bones in there. Um, just going over my process, this isn't really a tutorial, I'm just showing you how it happens pretty much. And um, just setting the offsets of the bones, making sure the limbs are actually attached to the main part of the skeleton. And um, gonna mirror over these um, legs. Uh, I'm also gotta go in and rename all the bones because if you don't have appropriate names for your bones in the armature later, it's going to be very annoying. Uh, speaking of annoying, uh, I'm on to weight painting. A lot of people uh, seem to physically, not physically, but manually kind of weight paint with the cursor. And what I like to do is I like to go into each vertice and each edge and uh, manually assign the weights in the inspector. Um, I, it works a lot better for me. It's less of kind of a guessing game and you get to very fine tune things. Um, so it's very satisfying once you get all those weights assigned and you start kind of posing your character. Um, it's the very first time I think in the process where it, everything seems to be coming to life and it's very satisfying. Um, the tail's kind of a dense little mesh here. Uh, it's kind of sloppy but I don't care for what I'm doing but um, it actually works out pretty nicely and it's going to look even better when we add an IK to it. Uh, speaking of IK, we're adding the IK to the legs. Um, IK stands for inverse kinematics I believe kinesthetics kinematics I believe um, and you add it to the tail just for a fun little bobbing motion that we'll use for our running animation later just showing off how um, tilting the body works with the IK and I'm adding a few um, rotational constraints to the body so it doesn't do anything crazy uh, anything you wouldn't expect an actual body to do and uh, just moving it around like this And after getting the kind of body movement right, I need to make the head kind of more easily animated since that's kind of the most expressive part of the character. And a good way to do that is kind of build these outer rigs, these manipulating points like uh, what you see I have selected here in pose mode. I'm using that to kind of rotate and offset um, other bone that's controlling the rotation and the one that I have that's connected to it kind of controls the placement of it. So I can raise that and lower that and it'll raise and lower the head and then the other one rotates it. A good test to see um, how well you've rigged your model is to just download an image from Google that kind of fits the description. We have a quadruped, a dog here, and we're roughly matching the pose of it. And if that works, it works. Here's a little image of me trying to get some kind of cool system to work with the rotation there, but there seems to be a glitch with Blender where if I undo it, or reset the rotation, it'll take 10 inputs for me to get it to its original position. That's definitely some kind of glitch, 
and not an issue on my part. Uh, I don't know how to get around it, so I just scrapped that part. It wasn't that important. Right now, I'm going through and animating. This is a very long process. I just make uh, an in-between or kind of an extreme where the um, dog is at the full gate of its run. And I go in the middle and I make the other extreme of that. And I do a lot of in-betweens. And eventually, you end up with a finished run cycle. Um, it's good to look at references for this. I was looking at kind of an abstract reference. Um, kind of a stylized dog running animation. And uh, that's not completely... Uh, suggested I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, suggest doing that but uh, that's what I ended up doing because I guess I was lazy right now I am going through and adding a lot of seams to my mesh so that I can uh, UV unwrap it UV unwrapping is just kind of laying out the mesh so that you can add a texture to it and we do that in Photoshop just make an image file and we can add um, fur to the creature and kind of paint it how we'd want it to look um, I think that UV unwrapping is very tedious, I don't like doing it, I haven't gotten it down and learned it as well as I'd like, but for what we're doing, um, this is okay, it ends up kind of sloppy at the end, but not a big deal. Um, probably should have shortened this section down even more, because this isn't really a section that we need to go over too much, but I just wanted to include it because it's the full process of me creating the character. Um, I laid out a very basic kind of uh, number. Uh, pattern thing there to see where everything actually lays and I'm making the actual image file for the texture now I'm just kind of going into Photoshop saving the um, PSD it can read those um, as well as regular image files and um, you just paint onto it exactly where you'd want everything to go and the layout of the UV um, is important because I have it set up where the front legs are in the top left and right and the bottom legs are in the bottom left and right and it has to all kind of make sense so you know what you're doing in the end. And I'm just painting the inside of the mouth there. And um, overall, it turned out pretty good, but it was very tedious. I'm grabbing a texture off of Google here, and I'm kind of just using content aware scale to fill the entire area and using an overlay. So it kind of just gives the character that fur texture in a very simple and easy way. It did add some dark spots on there but I really don't care enough to go in and change that. We'll make sure that it looks good for the final actual character. And then I'm just jumping in the Unity and I throw the character in here and skipping a little bit of coding and animating uh, using the animator. Um, it works like a charm, it works great. Just run around and uh, I have a simple third person uh, character controller that I set up and I think it works really well. Just set it to a few variables if the character is moving forward uh, play the animation and uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna add some more animations in the future um, Some jumping animations regular walking animations And this is actually a platforming game that I have been waiting a while to work on and I am very excited to work on it It's a platforming game called brain nine and it's about a dog that gets smarter as it eats a special kind of uh, dog food uh, It's gonna be very wacky um and that's all I'm pretty much going to say about it right now. I'm planning on making a lot of update videos about it. And if you're interested about it, if you like game design, um, follow me. If you're interested in Halo content, I'll be making more of that to uh, follow my account, follow my YouTube channel right here, or follow my Twitter, uh, which should be in the corner somewhere. I put an image. Um, so thank you for watching and have a nice day. Thank you.